Hello, and welcome to the Talent Board. This is Denny Oravec, and I'm the Program Director for the North America Candidate Experience Awards. And this presentation is about the Candidate Survey Best Practices. Many of you have already completed your first um, employer survey, which is round one, and now you're being welcomed into round two. So round two is where you get a chance to actually survey your candidates and get a chance to get the information that you really want from them. So you should have by now received some instructions uh, that came in a document attached to an email as well as a link to the methodology survey that we need to have you complete before we can send you your unique candidate survey link. We have a few suggestions in those directions on how you can promote the survey to your candidates, but I'm going to show you a few more things and give you a few more ideas on how to ensure that you get the best responses possible. First of all, there's a myriad of ways that we suggest that you invite your, ca your candidates. Uh, you can initially send a direct email. We highly recommend that because an email is where we seem to get and find the most response. You can invite your talent community. You can also post a message with a graphic on your career site. You can add a link to Facebook or your, your company Facebook page or if you have a special um, jobs Facebook page that you use. And also leveraging sites like LinkedIn or Quora or any other site that your candidate uses to find you and to look things up or find out about jobs. You'll see at the bottom of our um, slide here we have a number of graphics. We will present these graphics to you with your survey link so that you can use one of them if you choose um, in your either email or in, on your website uh, as you'll see in some of our examples. So our first example is from The Gap. They were one of our 2014 winners and they put it right there on their career page. You can see that it's down there at the bottom of their first page above the fold, and it says GAP is participating in the Candidate Experience Awards and is asking their candidates to share their experience um, with a third party so that they know that it's not the GAP that's actually doing it, it's the talent board. And your answers will be completely confidential and your name will not be revealed to us or sold by the third party. So they, they give you some privacy information right there on their page. Our second example is CH2M Hill, who's a multi-year winner, and they on their website actually have a pop-up that explains the Candidate Experience Awards survey. So they're very clear that uh, the reason that they're doing this is in an effort to better understand how well we work with the job seekers who visit their career site. And so they have the graphic on there. They also have a link to our site uh, where it says the 2014 Candidate Experience Awards. That would take someone to the Talent Board site. And it also has a button that says, Take the Survey. That is so important. I can't tell you how important it is to have a button either on your email or on your website, something that actually tells people what to do. Um, we've had a number of situations where the emails weren't quite clear enough, which brings us to some of the best practices. You want to make the invitation as personal as possible. Obviously, with any candidate, personal is going to make them feel better. And so if you use a real person's name or a real person's email and not a do not reply address on your emails, you're going to get a much better response, a much, much better response. You, you can ask their candid feedback for uh, their experience with your company, even if they were not selected or if they're still in the process. You can let them know that their responses will be anonymous. Within the survey itself, there is a link to our privacy policy. And you want to make sure that your message is clear. You want to give them the reason why you want them to apply, you know, that you would want to improve their, your process, that you want to find out what they actually experienced. 
You want to find out what things are working that they're doing and or that you're doing and what things that you're doing that aren't working. So make it clear that while you want their feedback, however, this is not an invitation to reopening their application or an indication of their status. I will say that we do get many, many uh, email responses to support at the talentboard.org where people think that this is reopening their process, their um, hiring process, and that this means that they should be getting an interview soon or something like that. So it's important that you do let them know that because we at the Talent Board, we will respond and let them know that they do have to reach out to the company for any information regarding their status. We also put that on our um, 1-800 number so that they get a clear understanding that we are truly a third party just collecting and managing the responses. So as I mentioned before, if you use a linked graphic in your message, you need to make sure to tell them to click on the graphic. We had a very funny situation where we had um, a number of emails coming in on one particular day when a company sent out to quite a number of candidates where the people were responding and saying that they didn't have a link on their email, that they didn't know, you know, they'd be happy to take the survey, but they didn't have a link. Well, the link was embedded in the graphic, but there was nothing to indicate to the job seeker that that's where it was. So you need to make sure that you put in something like click here below uh, or click the graphic below or click here to start the survey. Put it a couple of times in your message or in your email because that way at least if they don't see it one place, they'll see it another. Let's talk a little bit about what's actually required in order for you to qualify for the Candidate Experience Award in round two. There are a certain number of valid responses that need to be collected in order to ensure that you have statistically valid data. So we are asking that if you have up to 500 hires in the past year that you need to have responses of at least 100 responses or more. Um, for hires between 501 and 1,500, we need to see 500 responses. And for 1,000 uh, or 1,500 hires or more, we need to see at least 1,000 responses or more. Ideally, we'd like you to send it to as many candidates that, have, that you've dealt with over the past six to eight, maybe even 12 months, as possible because the more people that you send to, the more likelihood that you will get a better response rate and the more likely you will get better data all in the long run. That's the, the prize is the data, aside from having a, a really nice trophy if you do win. So your next steps as part of round two, you need to determine who your candidate audience is going to be. And oh, by the way, we do have some guides available for you to help you technically for pulling your candidates from various um, ATS and CRM platforms. So what you would need to do is contact support at the talentboard.org and tell us what ATS you're working with and we'll let you know whether we have guides available for you for that particular platform. Also, you need to decide on your method of distribution. Or if you, you can use multiple. So are you going to put something on your website as well as send out an email? Um, I think that's a great way to, to approach it. That way you get people who are just coming to your website to research it and begin to apply. And you also get the folks who have already perhaps applied and have been rejected and some of the folks who have moved on through the interview and offer process. Ensure that you invite enough people to meet the required number of responses. So for example, if you need to have 1,000 responses, you should really invite a minimum, minimum of 10,000 candidates. That assumes a 10% response rate. Now that's a great response rate. Sometimes you get anywhere between a 3 and 5% response rate. So if that's the case, 
for a thousand responses, you may have to send out as many as 30,000 invitations to candidates. So just think about that in terms of uh, any surveys that you've done in the past and what your response rate has been. We would love to see, once you tell us what your pool is, we would love to see a 10% response rate. But we do um, understand that sometimes that happens, and we take each individual case under consideration. Uh, the next thing you need to do is complete the methodology survey. Once you have completed the methodology survey, which we will be checking on a daily basis, you will be sent a very specific link that is specific to your company, and that will be a web collector that you will use and that we will receive the data. So we suggest that as soon as you receive that information, um, that you don't wait, that you send that out to the candidates as soon as possible. Our candidate survey will be open until July the 15th. So you would have from, well, a full two months if you get going very quickly. If you get going a little later, it, they will have at least six weeks. Most candidates, when they receive their invitation, they respond within the first two weeks. So, but we do encourage you to get your links out as quickly as possible. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support at the talentboard.org, or you can reach us on our 1-888 number, um, and we will return your call ideally within 24 hours. So good luck with round two, and uh, hope that you get as many candidates to respond to your survey as you're looking to receive. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.